In this demo, I'm going to demonstrate Doctopus, which is a great way to organize your students' assignments, projects, uh, documents in your Google Docs. Uh, the first thing that I want to do in order to uh, use uh, Doctopus is that I'm going to, I have already created a, a class roster with my contact information for each one of my kids. I'm going to copy this information and under my uh, class folder I've created a uh, new folder for the assignment that I'm going to assign all of the kids and I'm going to create a new uh, spreadsheet in that folder. Uh, in that spreadsheet then I'm going to paste my student information with the first name, last name, and their email address. And I'm going to title this uh, the name of the assignment. So maybe perhaps the year, uh, the class name, and the assignment name, and click OK. Now what I want to do to assign uh, the assignment to all my kids is I'm going to run a script in here that I can find under the tools column under uh, the script gallery. Now Doctopus is actually currently right here on the main uh, page under the script gallery but if it wasn't you could always type in the search Doctopus, D-O-C-T-O-P-U-S and you'd be able to find it uh, that way as well. Once you have it, you can click install, and it's going to then ask your uh, per permission uh, to run. And so I'm going to scroll down and click authorize. It'll tell me that I have authorized it, it has installed it, and I'll know because I have this Doctopus uh, tab now on my screen. If you want to know how Doctopus works and you want to learn more about the person who wrote and created this uh, fantastic script, by all means click on the how does Doctopus work. Uh, I'm going to click launch uh, installation. What I'm going to do now in step one is I'm going to determine whether or not I want this to be a group project where it would then create a document one per group and share it with all the collaborators on the group whether I want it to be something the whole class works on where it creates only one document for the entire class or if I want this to be created uh, as in individually so that each student gets a, a document assigned to them and they are the editor on it. You can also grant access to the whole class uh, as a viewer so if you want not only for the students to be able to have their own and share and be able to edit their own if you want the rest of the class to be able to view each other's work, you could do that as well. I'm not going to give access at this time uh, to my other kids. Under roster settings, this was my roster that I create, I copied into um, my new spreadsheet, and it's on sheet one. And the column containing the email address is in the email address column, so I'm going to select that uh, from my drop-down menu and then click the save settings. After you click the save settings, it's going to take you to step two of the process. Now, this script is a large script and there's a lot working in the background. So sometimes, depending on your network speed or depending on what's going on, um, it, it may take a minute or two, uh, and a minute may be too long. It may take a few seconds in order to get to the next step. Step two now it's going to ask you which document you actually want to share and so I'm gonna select the folder that my document or that my assignment lives in and it lives in my unit 2.3 assignments folder and once you select that the script is now going to your documents in your, in your Google Drive and it's figuring out which ones that you could potentially share and the more documents you have the longer th this will take um, now it's found my file folder or the folder that my file lives in I can go and actually select the file now uh, which is right here the residential water supply that I want to share that I want each uh, created for each kid and I can click on the uh, save settings so I've first step I set up how I wanted it to be shared uh, second step was I chose the document 
And now under step three, I'm going to choose where I want all of these documents to go. And I created a folder uh, inside of my uh, civil engineering uh, uh, area called residential water supply assignment. And that's where I want all of the assignments to go. And then it, the next thing I want to add is how do I want the files to be named? Well, I want the student's name and the title of the file. And you'll see here that we can uh, use the variables listed uh, in order to name our file. So I can make this last name, I can put a comma in, put the dollar sign first name. It's very important that you, act, you, you do this identically to what you see here. Uh, no capitals, no spaces, uh, if you want it to be named uh, the variable. And it's going to choose the last name and the first name from your spreadsheet. And then I can call this the name. So it's going to be the student's last name, student's first name, and then the actual name of the assignment. Underneath that, it's going to now send an email notification to each one of the students saying that the document has been shared with them, and if you want to include, include a note, you can. Click on the Save Settings after you have chosen your folder and you have set, it, set up uh, the, the email. And this is your verification. And so here it tells me that it's going to send out the email, the file that I'm sharing, and you want to click Run Copy and Share. This takes a minute to run. And there's a lot going on here. It's creating a new a copy of the document that you wanted to share. It's renaming it to the student's name and sharing it with that student. And it's placing it into the folder that you identified. And so the more kids you have in class, the longer this is going to take. If you go to your drive, you can see that it is creating these assignments now inside of my folder. And if you go to your drive, you can actually see this happening. Uh, I'm going to pause this uh, recording until it's done. It should just take another minute, uh, but until then, I will pause. Now that it's done running the script and creating uh, all of my uh, documents, it tells me that it's done successfully, and please explore the menu for grading and feedback options. What it has automatically created now is a link to all of the assignments that I've created uh, for the kids when it was last edited, and now I can actually add grades and give written feedback. I can also find these assignments in my folder that I created, and they're all named with the kids, the students' names, and their assignment. Who owns it? They have editing rights to it. and. Uh, and it's all very neat, very organized, and they're named the same. The uh, next thing that you may want to do is you may want to add grades and give some written feedback. After you've graded all the work and you've given uh, the feedback to each of the kids, uh, what you can do then is under Doctopus, uh, you can actually email the students, their grades, and their feedback. Another very nice option under the Doctopus menu is that you can actually embargo for grading. And what this does is it actually turns the editors um, of the documents to the view only. So if you have a due date that you want the assignment due by and you want to turn off the student's edit rights, you just simply click on the embargo for grading assignment or option here, and it turns that off. You can also turn that back on to, so that the viewers uh, or that the students can edit once again uh, if you want to give them that option again uh, in the same menu later. If you give the grade, you give the feedback, you can all just send out the email for grades and feedback. And if you select that option, a menu pops up. It again is going to send to the student's email. It's going to give the feedback on the name you can have it say, Dear Student, or you could actually change Student here to say uh, just their first name if you wanted this to be more personal, so your dollar sign, and then in all lowercase letters. 
first name. Uh, you got a grade, and then it take it pulls the grade from the uh, from the actual column. It says you can see the comments as well, and it it sends them the comments. You can go down to the bottom, and rather than your teacher, you could say best wishes if you wanted here, good luck, uh, and then you could put your name where it says your teacher. Go ahead and click save and send emails. And what it's going to do now is it's going to send the students their grades, it's going to send them uh, your feedback, and it's going to give them uh, the personalized email uh, that you had set up for them through the uh, prompts that were given through Doctopus. It tells me now that it's done running, that the emails were all successfully sent, so I know that all of my students got my feedback, they received the grades for the assignment, and they can contact me back or we can talk about all these assignments again. Um, that's how Doctopus works. Uh, that's it in a nutshell. I think that this is an incredible tool and I'm very much looking forward to starting to use it in all of my classes and if you're really struggling with organizing Google Docs and how to best run Google Apps for Education out of your classroom, uh, this is a script that is going to be uh, very valuable to you and, ma and actually making life a little bit easier. Um, I hope you enjoyed the demo, uh, and if you have any questions, you can uh, contact me, uh, and I'll be more than happy to support. Good luck.